Can you use a spreadsheet as a free CRM for your business? And is it even worth your time? Welcome back to Forward Facing Business, the show for companies making 1 million to 6 million EBITDA that want to grow to 12 million. Do I like CRMs? Yes, I like them. But I've worked for small companies using HubSpot. I've worked for niche companies using real estate CRMs. And then I remember my first startup I worked for it and he had a free CRM called Sugar CRM. So I'll show you screenshots of all of these, but really I want you to understand what they're for and ultimately how you can just get cranking away in a spreadsheet so that you can start running your business now. Does that make sense? So let's jump into it. All right, so I'm running a quick little slide deck here. If you want to see the slide deck yourself, just comment down below. I'll send you the link. I'll tell you to get it. The most important thing from this though is, is a CRM technically is a customer relationship management piece of software. So when you are doing CRM, you are managing the relationships you have with your customers. If you only have five of them, this isn't hard to do on the back of a napkin or in a notebook. You know what I mean? But when you have hundreds of thousands of them, my last company had 200,000 active customers. You want to know when you talk to them, who's working those opportunities, what the relationship currently looks like with them. But if you're working like a list of 100 in your neighborhood, let's say you're building homes and you've got a list of the 100 most affluent people in St. Tammany Parish. That's where I am, St. Tammany Parish in Louisiana. You could run that 100 just from a spreadsheet. So customer relationship management at its core is about who you're talking to, how often you talk to them, why you're talking to them, and then more importantly, did you forget to talk to anyone? The major providers should look pretty familiar to you. The big names out there, salesforce.com, everyone has to differentiate .com because your Salesforce is technically the people that work for you and sell in your business. Does that make sense? Okay, HubSpot is a popular one for the mid-market sector for small businesses. Go High Level is a real niche one that I'm seeing. Real estate agents have started adopting that one. And then Sugar CRM is the open source free one. It's not really suitable for everyone out of the box. So at a minimum, if you're gonna buy one, go for one of the niche ones or go for the small business ones, but we'll talk about these in another slide. At the end of the day, what you need is name, contact info, contact history, and then notes or statuses. So we're gonna build one live here. And I'm gonna show you some basic features that I would do if I was building this myself. We need the name. I'm not even gonna put the company. I'm just gonna put the name, contact info. This might be Joe Schmo at email. And then I'm gonna put 10 touch points here. So let's call this, actually, let's start this month. May, 2025, June, 2025. Let's see if that's enough for the spreadsheet to be smart. Where are you at? Bam, isn't that cool? And we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, delete those guys. And then we'll call this the touch point. Let's put let's just populate a bunch in here. Prospect A, prospect B. Let's see if Google's figured us out yet. You sure didn't, man. How how'd you jack that up? Prospect C. All right, now. Whatever. Pretend like these are different guys. We're going to leave this here. The last thing that's important here is you got to have like a notes or status. So I'm going to do the status here. Let's do data validation drop down. Let's call it working action. Normally this would be an open opportunity, but let's call it working, which means we're working through the statuses here. And then let's do one and let's do lost. Normally in an opportunity, you would call that closed lost. So we'll get that and then one and then make that one blue. Okay. So now if you're working great. Okay. And let's freeze the top pane view freeze one row and view freeze one column. Okay. So look what's going to happen here. Let's put in blank at gmail.com, deuce at gmail.com, working at gmail.com. And then let's make this one a phone number, 555-676-8989. And then we'll just actually copy this down like they did on the last one. Okay, cool. So, and then for all you OCD people like me, let's make these the same size. Okay, we'll make this a little light blue, bold the letters. Anyway, my point here is, and you know what? Let's just make that two, two columns. Okay, I know this sounds 
crazy, but this is really how I would work this. These ultimately are what you would call opportunities in a CRM. But for me, it's just, well, let's put a real name here. Prospect A, we're going to call her Jane Smith. And let's call prospect B, Joe Bank Owner. Okay, so I would go through here. I would send my email and make my phone call. And you got to be willing to do the work. When I did this in real estate, I had lists from the title companies. I would call 100 at a time. But I would just note here, uh, got voicemail, shot email. All right, I'm done with the May touch point. And because we're not super sophisticated here, you're going to have to leave rudimentary notes. Sent mailer, emailed, template, X, Y, Z. So what I know from here at a glance, if I'm looking at my May, I know who I didn't email, right? It showed me. I know if I emailed. And then let's say that uh, John Builder comes back. He's like, yo, pack sand, right? Okay, so John Builder is closed, lost. I no longer want to talk to John. Now, what I can do is if I create the data filter here, then I know I only want to talk to, I want to remove lost essentially, right? Okay, well, John's not showing up in my subsequent months. So now I'm going to go back through my workings. And let's say you want to, you could adjust this data field to say uh, assign to, let's go to our data validation. Let's say assigned to Jimmy. Let's say you have a, a, a business development rep, someone closing calendars for you. So let's put deuces, maybe Jimmy's outstanding. And here, let's, I'm going to show you why the filters work. So let's put a few of these assigned to Jimmy. Okay, so now let's say you want you only want to look at uh, what Jimmy's working. And so now you can go see what Jimmy's last notes are, right? Does that make sense? So Jimmy might say, oh, Jimmy sent a mailer, dropped in her office, and let's see, dated her daughter. Come on, Jimmy, what's the matter with you, buddy? So, and then don't worry about like, this is all data, right? So just kidding, sent a mailer. <clears throat> My point is, I don't care that it's flooding over on the lines like that, right? I just want it to be in the data. And then when we go into June, okay, we're looking at, let's go select all except for lost, because I don't really want to look at lost. So now when I go into June, I've got my little slider here. Now I'm going to start working June and see what the June status is. Does that make sense? And you can start to see, you know what would be interesting about this horizontal view too, is you'll start to see, all right, so my, my $10,000 deal, I worked, uh, I had five touch points. When you collect closed one here, if you start looking at just your ones, how many touch points do you have on average? So in this spreadsheet, right, it is useful data. We can, I can get, I can glean some information here that helps me to run my business and it's better than calling Chad and paying me 500 bucks to tell you which CRM to use or a thousand dollars to help you implement Salesforce and then none of your sellers use it or you don't use it and it collects dust on the shelf and doesn't really do anything. So I would rather see you in a spreadsheet making the calls and doing the outbound and then working on your lead generation and then tracking what they're interested in than I would like chasing down different CRMs. That's the main point here. But let's talk about where this really shines, where it's different. So the key difference on a real CRM is that it's a relational database. So what that means is that at the end of the day, you want to be able to make one change and let it impact all of these things. You see the arrow on the screen? So if you were to change Amy, let's say Amy got married and now she's Amy Baker and you don't want to call her Amy Smith. Well, in your CRM, if you update Amy Baker, is that what I said? If you change it to Amy Baker on the contact, then all of a sudden it'll update the company record. It'll update the opportunity record down here. If you have any dashboards, it'll automatically update all your dashboards. And then, oh, by the way, it's keeping all this as raw data for you. So if you have other visualization platforms like Tableau, you can just bring in your raw data and use it, or you can export this to your emailers, to your paper mailers, etc. The real key difference on these is that the CRM gives you extra bells and whistles. It'll allow you to do things like email integration. Another handy tool is in a CRM, if you're cranking away emails in your Gmail or even Outlook, that can integrate into things like HubSpot or Salesforce. So do you need the expensive CRM to run your business? No, I would rather see you tracking it and getting your data in there and making your outbound. Remember, you're not in business until someone that's not your mama, your grandma, your auntie gives you a dollar bill. So you have to be doing real outbound. You have to be generating leads, but you don't have to hold yourself back because you haven't spent 50 grand on Salesforce 
or bought into like a $99 a month in HubSpot. Does that make sense? If you like this episode, I want you to like and subscribe. If you're interested in a business review of your own, leave me a comment. I'll tell you how to get in touch with me and we can do one on video just like you see here. I'll see you in the next one.